Greetings, fellow horror fans. This is Freaks Movie Reviews, a new channel to bring everyone who just loves horror movies together. Last time I reviewed a spider movie called, well, Spiders, and it sucked more than a leech, a vacuum cleaner, a tornado, nickelback and a black hole in space combined. Yeah! Speaking about things that suck gave me the idea to review a movie that is not as bad as the last one. Yes, I decided to raise the stakes a little, leave the CGI spiders behind me for a while, and now focus on parasite arachnids that suck your blood. Yes, I'm talking about ticks. Nasty little fuckers, aren't they? As if spiders weren't scary enough, nature decided there should be some blood-sucking ones too. The mere existence of these horrific creatures is often overlooked or forgotten, but the victims will never forget, and so for them, I made this memorial. Ticks are evil, and of course there had to be a cheesy horror movie made about them. So for the second installment of Spider Month, we'll take a look at Ticks. Spiders. Now I must say, even though the title again is kind of lazy, this time it doesn't bother me too much as to my knowledge this is the only movie that deals with ticks. And therefore they have the right to claim the title. Unlike that awful Spiders movie, I still can't believe... Okay, moving on. It's still a little lazy, but I invoke the first come first serve principle, which is why I hope to someday make a horror movie called Tasseled Wobbegong. And of course, its sequel, Tasseled Wobbegong vs. Mustached Puffbird. I really hope the movie is not as lazy as the title though. I might not survive another boar fest. Well, the creatures themselves already look better anyway. That is, they don't look like a failed first grade CGI student project. This time, well-crafted puppets and props are used and no visual effects are involved. Just look at how realistic these monsters are. I mean, it really looks like they... Oh wait, no, that's not a tick, that's Clint Howard. Aukwarde. The movie opens with Clint Howard in a barn, working on some MACHINES! I know, Clint Howard in a barn, in a horror movie, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> So he dies. It's never really explained what these machines do exactly. We see some weed and some goo, so I'm assuming he's making space soup. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, top notch. Maybe it's for the Galaxy Grill and space balls. I can give you the space soup or the space special. Um, I'll have the soup. Okay. I'll have the cleavage. Er, uh, special. Then we cut to Seth Green playing Tyler, our main character, who's being dropped off by his father. Apparently he's going on a retreat with some social workers to work out his out of control behavior. I'm doing this because I want you to get better. Yeah, I want you to get better. That is why I'm dropping you off in the middle of this deserted scrummy looking place. Seriously, what kind of location for a rendezvous is this? What was the pet cemetery not an option? Hey, you must be Tyler. Don't worry, after this camping trip you'll be a normal teenager again. Yeah. Oh dear. Well, I'm sure he's fine. Oh look, he's getting approached by some psycho with a pocket knife, who introduces himself as Panic. See, they call me Panic because I never do. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Isn't that like saying, they call me shit in my pants because I never do? He and his dog have Tyler in a tight spot, so he forces him to play basketball. Oh, the horror. So the social workers arrive and hey, it's Carlton. I didn't recognize him. Oh, hell no. I will never be able to take him seriously now. Dad? Yeah, Carlton Banks playing a psycho that lives on the street. I don't think so. Sucker. We meet all the other troubled teens who are basically 80s stereotypes. There's the geek, the psycho, the jog, the spoiled rich chick, the silent emo. No, 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 wait just a minute. That leaves this girl, but she's only here to be Tyler's love interest that will never go anywhere, so I'm just gonna ignore her. The teens make a quick stop along the road, meeting some creepy rednecks. How original. The rednecks are as cliche as you can get, the scene doesn't go anywhere, so I'm assuming they must be the movie's bad guys. Congratulations! Congratulations! Congra but again, I must ask, 
Why are there villains in a movie about killer ticks? It's like having Dennis Hopper from Waterworld be the bad guy in Jaws. It doesn't make sense. The real monster is the shark and alcoholism. When the teens arrive at the cabin in the woods, does that mean they're being watched? Tyler notices a large amount of spider webs in his room. Of course, this has nothing to do with ticks because we all know they can't make webs. They're not spiders, they're arachnids. So I'm just gonna assume there are some spiders in the room who have nothing to do with what the film is about. But hey, Wikipedia wasn't a thing yet, so I'll let it slide. The next couple of scenes give us a further exposition of the characters. Panic's dog dies. Well, that's kind of sad. Which leads him to run off in anger. Of course, instead of calling the police to signal that a criminal and troubled teen has wandered off alone in the woods, the social workers call the police to take a look at the dead dog. Oh, come on! Well, maybe the police wouldn't look for him anyway. You know, because he's capable of taking care of his own. So they take the dog to the vet, leading to the very first actual horror scene. Hey. It is massively done, all with special effects and stop motion. The tick looks really gross and disturbing, and most of all, realistic. It's a very suspenseful sequence with great visuals. When in doubt, squish. Too bad there are a few hiccups, though. Like an aquarium fishing net? No, no, that's not gonna work, honey. Also, the vet squashes the tick with her foot, but in the next scene the dead ticks look normal again. But hey, they are mutated. Maybe it can regenerate, like a superhero. Also listen to the vet's reaction when she pulls a monster out of the dog's cadaver. Where the hell did you people come from? It's a cheesy B-movie line, sure, but that wouldn't be my first reaction. It would more likely be something along the lines of Holy shit, look at this fucking thing! Oh my god! Oh my god, look at this thing! Oh my, look at this fucking thing! Nothing to do here. By the way, for a normal vet in what I suppose is a laid-back town near the woods, she really knows a lot about these ticks. These are monsters she has never seen before, and still she knows what species they are, what their exact behavior is, even what kind of steroid is used to make them so large. You know there's a difference between a vet and an entomologist, or arachnologist. Well, maybe it's a hobby. There you go, girl. The scenes that follow are pretty standard. You got Breakfast Club in the van. When I'm alone, I get scared. And stand by me at the lake. <coughs> Deliverance in the woods. Do you like me? Say yes, sir. I'm a faggot. Where's Burt Reynolds when you need him? Message for you, sir. And of course, there is the obligatory Elephant Man scene ripping off Alien, just like in Spiders. Again, the special effects and makeup department really shine here, so I don't mind too much. What I do mind, however, is how useless these two rednecks are to the plot. I mean, sure, their illegal use of steroids on their pot farm is what caused these sticks to grow so large, but other than that, they're only here to make the movie longer. And that is exactly what they do. Instead of a solid, suspenseful climax, we get one that is stretched out to almost one third of the movie. What is it? They mad at me. No one's saying anything except me. You dig? With these two, it just gets sillier and sillier. I'm just waiting for the Looney Tunes logo to pop up. I know it's a B-movie about killer ticks, but up till now the plot and characters were kind of interesting. It was enjoyable to see the misfit teens develop and open up to the group, especially Seth Green and Carlton over here. They really have chemistry. Not like that. But now all the attention goes to these two clowns, putting all the character development to a crushing halt. You can have stereotypical douchebags as a character, as some sort of comic relief or to create conflict, but you don't want them taking over your entire climax, especially if they're not the main bad guys. This is why characters like these often are the first to get killed off in a horror movie, just like Lind Howard did. Anyway, as soon as the rednecks are gone, the story is engaging again for the last few minutes, and it really manages to keep your attention. The movie ends with this scene, when there's an egg sack of the ticks that survived the fire and the ride home. But I find it hard to believe that no one cared to scrutinize the bus for any remaining ticks. Like they just said, hey, just drop it off at this junkyard, it'll be fine. Why does no one ever bother to look under his car? Wanna drive through that cactus patch? Yeah! Yeah! No! Whoop! Two against one. Oh, 
<laughs> of course, there has to be room for a crappy sequel that would never be made, so it's alright, I guess. Would I recommend Ticks? Yes, if you would like to see the Breakfast Club in the woods, with spider-like creatures. Like I said, the characters are kind of interesting, especially Seth Green. To be honest, I think he's a damn good teen actor. He really has a talent for delivering terrible jokes, but still in a funny way. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure, man. I mean, if I can manage to swing out far enough and then defy the laws of gravity and meet the van on the backswing... <laughs> I'll need a torch. And Carlton, as a pocket knife wielding inner city thug, is also a joy to watch. Who would have known? Well, when Crackle and Pop cut a diss, then call me. <laughs> <laughs> also, the special effects are pretty damn good. Working with little monsters is always a challenge, and this film pulls it off. You really believe the ticks are there, leaping at the actors. Certainly, if a B-movie like this one would be made nowadays, they would have resorted to some dreadful CGI effects. <laughs> However, the plot lacks some focus. It succumbs to some movie monster cliches, like the rednecks and the alien shit and the obligatory transformation scene. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that, Panic turns into a giant tick. Um... All gone. The movie also stays very loyal to the killing off hierarchy of horror movies. First the oddball, then the dog, then the black guy, the sex crazy couple, the rednecks and Kevin Bacon. But all in all this is a solid monster movie, with enough tension and cheesiness to keep you interested. It's not a masterpiece, but it's not trying to be. It is just silly fun to watch. Au revoir. So this was Tix. Thank you so much for watching. If you like it, share the love by subscribing and liking. Spider Month is well on its way, so stay tuned for the next episode, which will be Eight Legged Freaks. It's with Scarlett Johansson. Tell <laughs>